Good afternoon, my name is Matthew, I work at Axel Technologies and today I'm making a short video to show how to configure smart card readers to work with an Axel ThinkClient terminal. I have a Model 80 terminal here, but the same applies to all Axel ThinkClient terminals. So the first step is to attach the device to the terminal and check that the smart card reader is CCID compliant. Within the terminal there is a PC SC resource manager which can be considered a driver and that will support CCID compliant smart card readers. Check this, enter setup, control alt escape, go into diagnostics, USB and that will list all your USB devices. I have two smart card readers and a keyboard. Uh, the first smart card reader is described as an EZO shield and entering spacebar we get details, it's made by Jamalto, and going into details, it is the driver which the terminal is using is USB CCID, which means that this smart card reader has been detected and recognized as a CCID compliant smart card reader. And I'll just check the second one, which is manufactured by SCM Microsystems. And if I go into details again, the terminals associated the USB CCID internal driver which, which implies that the terminal has recognized this smart card reader as being CCID compliant. The next step is to configure the terminal to redirect the smart card devices back to the terminal server. So to do that we need to log out, enter setup again, control alt escape and go into sessions whichever session we're configuring and down at the bottom we have redirected resources smart card set to yes and auto connection set to yes quit out saving and log in again I've logged in and removed one of the smart cards it doesn't really make sense to have two smart cards connected to one terminal and our engineer has written a very small program just to detect the presence of a card when it's inserted into the reader just so we can show something happening. Uh, we can't actually read the contents of the card to do that um, it requires the encryption software that only the issuer of the card actually has. So we can see here that I have the uh, Jumalto smart card attached um, that's confirmed here, the Jumalto EZO Shield Zero. If I turn the software on, when I insert my credit card, um, it turns green. So again, it, it doesn't show that much. Um, you, we can't read the actual card because to read the card we'd need to have the decryption software from Nationwide. Um, but what it does prove is that the smart card, or the smart card reader, is mapped through to the terminal server and uh, we can see that's working because the actual software running on the server can detect when the smart card is inserted. I've now attached the second smart card reader and it's now detected as the SCM uh, CCID interface zero smart card and if I turn it on again yeah, it's, you can see that it can detect the presence of a card. There are very few settings to, to play with with smart card, smart card reader setup as the terminal essentially creates a TCP IP pipe between the, the peripheral and the server and what goes in at the peripheral end comes out of at the server end untouched. There is however one setting that you can change that may need to be changed in, in certain requirements. If I turn off our monitoring software here, the actual smart card is being reported to Windows by this name, which is in this case Jumalto EZO Shield Zero. And we can change the name. Now, some applications may require a specific name, Smart Card One or, or whatever. Um, the approach we've taken is to use the vendor name followed by the IFD type, and that will give a certainly a name to refer to that Smart Card reader to. So, to change the name, we need to log out first and then go into setup, go into advanced, 
smart card readers. There's our Jamalto reference. And we could change, we could overwrite Jamalto to smart card. And we could change the IFD type to something else. Let's just call it number one. Save. And if we re-log in again, we'll see that the reference to that particular device has been changed. So I've re-logged in again, and you can now see that the reference to the smart card is smart card number one. And if I start the software, it's still working. So in most cases, you won't need to change that, but if you do require to change the name of the smart card reader, then you can do so. I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you have any questions, please contact your local Axel office or contact Axel via our website. Thank you very much and bye for now.